Hello everybody, it's that Tassie Wargamer here, back for another update on uh, basically some of the things I've been getting up to, uh, my projects so far. Not talking about infamy infamy, but I will be looking at uh, how my uh, my project, uh, painting projects are going in relation to getting my miniatures onto the table for this new rule set by Two Fat Lardies. Um, so today I'm going to be looking at the various states of my models, some of them fully completed, some of them half completed and some of them still being built. Um, and also a few of the other bits and pieces that have come through my mailbox that uh, we're going to have a quick look at. Anyway, we'll start at the beginning. I think we'll look at my purchases first and see what's, uh, what's new. This rule book is one of them. I'm not going to flick through. If you want to have a look at a review of the, uh, of the rules, there are a few reviews out there. But also the Two Fat Lardies page themselves have some uh, currently doing some great introductions to the rule sets. Certainly recommended. If you've never played a Two Fat Lardies rules, uh, highly recommended. They're a lot of fun. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, the rules came. So did uh, the tokens for my Two Fat Lardy. Uh, sorry, for Infamy Infamy. Now, previously, um, when I've bought, when I've had MDF tokens for uh, Sharp Practice, um, I primed them and I found this MDF was horrible at taking primer. I'd do one coat, wouldn't stick, do two coats, wouldn't stick, third coat, it was just starting to bubble and, and look awful. So a few people on uh, the website, on uh, the Infamy Infamy page on Facebook indicated, no, nah, just use a Sharpie. And I guess being Roman, they're a little bit sort of older, I can go for an antique look. So all I've done is I've used a brand, didn't get a Sharpie, I've used um, a few, uh, Montmartre. The great thing I like about these ones is they've got a, a thin end for doing any thin bits and a thicker end for doing the, the surrounds. And let me tell you, it took me oh, probably an eighth of a, a tenth of the time to quickly mark these up than it did with uh, when I had to do the priming and then painting. Those Sharpies are just so nice. The only thing I have to do is get rid of a few of the little, I'm just going to sand off just a, very lightly or maybe go over the knife to get rid of some of those edges. Um, I've just gone red and blue, obviously red for the Romans, blue for any of the opponents that they're going to be playing. Um, these are the, purely the Roman bits, so I've left them, I've done them red, likewise with those. And these ones here, which would be for the non-Romans, I've done in the blue. So yeah, I'm really happy. I was concerned about whether the, um, the Sharpies, uh, sorry, yeah, using a, a Sharpie or Sharpie type texture would come up all right, but um, I'm pretty happy. I probably will varnish them just to give them that sort of antique wood look. Next, something really exciting. Um, I can really look on various pages quite a bit for new bits and pieces that I can get for um, Wargaming. I happened to go onto eBay and rather than going onto the Wargaming page, I went onto the role playing page and I saw these role playing under role-playing uh, miniatures, I think it might have been. These are by Wiz Deep Cuts. Oh, I don't know if they're by Wiz Kids and called Deep Cuts, or it's Deep Cuts by Wiz Kids. I don't know. Uh, they're about six Australian dollars each, so pretty cheap. Um, and I haven't opened them, so I'm going to have a quick look now. This one here is a campfire and sitting log, primed, ready to paint out of the box. And this is what comes in this one, and I have looked. I've had a good look, and it looks pretty. Um, Pretty good. Mm, there we go, that was pretty easy to open. Let's put them out gently if I can. The thing I liked, really like the look of with these, yeah, apart from already being primed, is so you can put the, you know, the little fire log, it's actually got a little clear bit. So if I paint over it, it's going to remain clear. It's going to give that fire a really nice, um, a nice look. Rather than having to be painted, it'll actually have that. As you can see on the back of the packet, it's going to be um, translucent, so it'll actually take the paint really nicely. Um, nice little rabbit on a spit. Looks like there's a little bit of flash, even though there's not meant to be if it's been primed. These are these are plastic, but a pretty good plastic. Maybe a little bit of warping. Need a little bit of heat to a hot water and a log and a cauldron whether that's historically accurate cauldron i don't know um i might once i paint up i'll see uh ideally for my french indian war here they are 
with next to a Roman soldier, 28 millimeter. Certainly doesn't look out of scale. It didn't really say what scale they were, so I took a chance. So this one here, obviously French Indian War, Roman, anything that could be used for. Uh, great little vignette pieces, marking off a campsite or whatever. And there's two fires in the log in that one. This one here, I have made something similar before. This one is a couple of log, uh, a couple of stacks of logs. I've made something similar to bamboo. But I thought I'd try. This one goes, again, 28 millimeter. If you have a look at the Wizkid stuff, they've actually got a lot of stuff on um, on there as well. They do, oh, I think they do guillotines and they do forges and everything. So if you're looking at making a bit of a, a village, it could be really, really good. This one here, obviously, maybe my French or Indians would be using the lean-to. Quite a good looking size. And a... What would you call it? An apex tent or an A, an a tent? Yeah, pretty good size, really well priced. Primed, quite a quite a glossy primer, so I'm hoping it'll take to the painter right. I might post a bit later once they're painted up. Lots of detail inside and out. A little bit. Oh no, that just that looks like it's deliberately meant to be there. I thought it was a mark, a blemish. Um Good size, so um, you get to get these up and get them onto uh, onto the table. All right, that's all I've bought. I have a quick look now at um, at my projects. Uh, so I'll start at the at the blunt end and work my way through to the finished stuff. So in here, I have got bits and pieces of my barbarians currently being built. I bought a box of forty plastics from Warlord as well as some fanatics, I think they were, as well as some uh, leaders as well. So I'm, you know, sometimes I like to change. I don't want to get all the Romans done and then go into barbarians. I'll, I'll paint whatever I feel like painting or doing together. So I started gluing these up onto their washer bases. So that's where they are. Lovely detail. Um, I like Warlords. A lot of people say they're a bit small or whatever compared to Victrix. I've actually got some Victrix stuff here too, so... We'll, we can compare them. Haven't finished, and it's a time I'll start doing those heads again when I feel like um, when I don't feel like painting. So that's the back end. That's the barbarians. They're the least finished ones out of my lot. Next is on to my Romans. These are Caesarian Romans. Uh, so all I've done here, they've been based, pr uh, primed, cleaned, based. Um, I've started doing. I started the skin first then the black of the armour, then dry brushed the armour and um, and done the tunic. Now I've done the tunics blue. Um, I'll show you the, the slight difference between those. So these are my Optios as well as my Signa and and Musician. Also on there I've got, uh, I've made these two Centurions so to mark them off, mark them out. Yes, they do have the... Um, I don't know what they're called now, the leg, the leg armour. Um, I've given them, they both have red. I have to have it on the top there, but they'll both have red tunics and uh, the plumes as well. Um, I've done another, well, halfway through another unit of eight. It's general, um, general soldiers, that's another eight. They've all gone for the same cream uh, tunic. Um, the shield, I don't know what colour I'll be doing the shield yet. I I didn't order enough when I ordered them from Little Big Men. Here's one of my finished ones, actually. So that's what they're going to look like eventually. I haven't ordered any more of those shield decals, but I've already got three units with this decal, so I might make this fourth unit of eight. I might go for a totally different decal, and that will distinguish them if I want to use them as either um, veterans or, or trainees um, or as recruits. Um, so I've got the other eight of those guys going. I'll put him aside for a second. Also half finished. I started these even before the Romans, but I've sort of stopped them. Uh, my uh, the spearmen for the barbarians. Reasonably just about done. I think I've just got to add a little bit of well, no, half done. A little bit more colour on those guys. Getting there. I was going to get decals for the shields, but I really like 
having probably the more plain shields. I think I'll probably keep those as they are. There's another four there. Move those back away. Now, on to my finished work. Really happy with the way these guys have gone out. So I have, I think these only fight in groups of six, but uh, bought a group of eight. I wasn't really too unpainted. These are my Balearic Slingers. Really happy with the way they came out. Now, um, they were under undercoated grey, block painted, used an army painted dip, and then I used a, a just an acrylic primer. Uh, sorry, an acrylic spray. I didn't use um, clear coat or dull coat. Testers dull coat. I'm really happy. Um, I don't think I will continue over with the testers. I think I'm pretty happy with the way this is. A slight gloss, but that's to be expected. A little bit glossy, maybe where the where the test where the um dull coat didn't hit. A little bit of trim, you know. These are Mediterranean Islanders. Maybe probably a little bit of a little bit of money, so I've given them a little bit more trim than maybe the, the North Africans or even the well, actually no, my Iberians, are, are, as you'll see in a second. Uh, are going to uh, reasonably, reasonably well attired too. Some of my Balearic Slingers, they are done. They're ready to hit the table. Basing's not my forte. I used to, to spend a lot of time basing. I've given up. So I just would use my my homemade mix um, and do it from there. This was uh, Pompey. Here's one. No, I bought the general first just to give them, get myself into the the feeling of um, the feeling of doing the Romans. I really enjoyed painting him, which gave me then the sort of the impetus to keep going with the rest of them. I've got I've got two sets of these, and they're not really different. So rather than pulling the whole lot out, I might take a photo later and put it on my um, Instagram page. Notice a little bit of oh, looks a little bit dusty. That I don't know what's causing it. But I actually really like it. It gives it a bit, bit of an antique look. I can't say it's it's nothing bad. I don't know. It's that dull coat seems to have gone really dull. So I've gone for the cream tunic so there wouldn't be too much red. There's a bit of an argument whether the um, the horsehair plumes were red or black or whatever. I've decided to go a little bit of um. I've just decided to go for red. Go my own way. This was um, Marcus, Marcus Crassus. And so it was a little bit of a difficult, difficult one to paint. I don't know why. I can't say I really enjoyed painting him. I think he scrubbed up all right, I guess. He probably won't make the table too much because really at the, the level for him, for me, for me, I'm not going to see too many people of his level normally be leading. But I might just use him as a um, as some type of deployment point, maybe. These guys I'm really happy with. You might have seen these before when they're almost painted. You haven't seen them. I know you haven't seen them. Um, I don't think you've seen them based, and you probably haven't seen them dull coated. It turned out really well. I decided to hand paint the designs. Iberians being Celts, I thought you know a bit of a Celtic sort of design might be okay with some maybe borrowed from Scotland, Ireland, whatever. I really like the way the um, the, the army painter has has um, has worked on these. I really like them. Hand painted, oops, sorry, hand painted shield. I've gone for, even though probably not the colours of Spain at the time, we not we weren't to know. So I've decided, oops, sorry, knocking the camera. I've decided I would go for the Spanish colours to mark them off as Iberians. It's probably my least favourite shield design. So red and yellow, Spanish colours. That's, that's not a bad one. I like that that dotty colour. Now these are Victrix. Let me just show you the difference between Victrix. If I put a Victrix Cavalryman next to a Warlord um, Infantry, oops, sorry, Warlord Infantry certainly wouldn't be a problem. If I put the Cavalry next to Marcus Crassus, maybe a little bit. But then again, maybe I just had a smaller horse. Who knows? 10 seconds to go and then this thing's going to be a problem with me so i'll just quickly show you these two pretty happy with the shield designs and that's it folks have a good day